afternoon or good evening. It's the afternoon for me. And I have recently felt like a crazy person. And I realized that I'm not actually really a crazy person. It's just that I get too bogged down in indecision and I really lose sight of what I actually want to do. And I've said this on previous videos, so hello. <laughs> my name is Catherine. I live in Melbourne, Australia with my husband, Ben, and together we have 10 children. And as I extricate myself from the idea of, hi, I'm Catherine and I have 10 kids, to just, hi, I'm Catherine, I realize that I've got 11 other people that I think I have to consider. Now, obviously I do consider them. Like, I love my family very much. My husband and I get along tremendously well and I get along very well with my children. We have a very happy home life, but I, for a very, very long time, have been crippled with indecision. So a lot of the time what I'll actually do is what I think I should do, or what I think my husband might prefer, or what I think my kids would be happy with or what I think is socially acceptable or culturally acceptable or acceptable amongst the society that I live in, rather than actually thinking, Catherine, these things you're fretting over are so minor that it actually doesn't matter. Fretting over whether or not to sell something, to declutter it, to keep it, to rehome it, to throw it in the trash, or find another use in the home. This indecision has really limited me. And I did have this tremendous idea that I would become a reseller, that I would sell things. I have sold many, many, many things. I have sold things that we no longer wanted, excess, things that we were given things that were originally bought for reselling for bought cheaper and sold for profit things that I found on hard rubbish and I've sold them too but I think it's the fact that I love the reselling right there's no criticism against anybody who resells at all but I think for us personally, $5 for this and $10 for that isn't going to cut it. That we actually need exponentially more money than what we currently have. Because we live fairly comfortably, but we are traveling like this. Just traveling along life. There is more to life than getting up every day, driving to work, working, slogging your guts out and then driving home again, being awake for a few hours, going to sleep, waking up again the next day, rinse and repeat. Especially if you're working for not your dream job, if you're not, if you're just doing that because you, you have to. That's a, I don't know. I know I'm not articulating it well to make it clearly make sense, but let's meet it's just me chatting and um, getting some thoughts out. Well, just last week, I listed a ton of stuff. I'm like, once and for all, Catherine, you're gonna list these things and you're gonna sell them. And I sold stuff, but I sold this much and I still had this much left over. I am currently driving to the op shop to donate it. And it really seems like a quick turnaround. Like just last week I've listed it and now I'm donating it. It's because I'm digging really deep to reconnect with what I actually want. And what I actually want is to live with less, 
to make do with what I have to live stress-free. Will me donating this stuff magically make me never stress again and never worry? No, I am smarter than that. But it's just sitting in the corner. And I'm sorry, but for five or ten dollars, eventually, maybe, possibly, it's not worth it to me. So I loaded up the box and I have two extra storage containers. What am I saving them for? Like I actually think saving storage containers means that you actually, on a subconscious level, want to acquire more stuff. No, no. We have more than enough. My children have actually commented that our house feels so much more peaceful than other people's homes that they've gone to and that we have a lot less stuff than a lot of the homes that they have gone to but we're all just kind of feeling this shift with why are we clinging to our things why are we keeping stuff that we don't use or that's annoying or it's kind of ugly or semi-broken or too good that's the other side of it. You have stuff that it's like too good. Like, oh, that's too good. I don't wanna. I don't wanna use it. I might break it. Well, use it or lose it. So the weather has been really crazy here today. It's been raining and then sunshiny and bright. So I am driving in between rain showers. I know the stuff I'm donating is worth money and I know that when they put it up on the shelf someone will come along and with joy in their hearts pick it up and collect it and keep it and love it. I wasn't loving and keeping it in the hobby room. I've made tremendous progress in there and I just wasn't loving having that stuff. I've learned many lessons. Some of these things are actually things that I've shared in thrift hauls. And I'm just not really using. I'm still, like, I, have I finally learned? <laughs> have I finally learned? I've returned back to the original thing that I already had and I was happily using. And I do feel a sense of sadness that in some ways this is really put a major stop to me desiring to thrift. It's sad because I love thrifting. But we are so privileged. We are so blessed. My husband and I and our children have good health. We have good relationships. We live in Australia. We can freely um, share our religious, political beliefs whatever like we're free um and i said to my brother yesterday i'm like if you can declutter you have no idea how privileged you are if you're actually at the point where you're continually decluttering and i'm talking to myself i'm saying the word you so privileged like how is that so much stuff that i'm constantly decluttering what the hell am I doing with my life? So, with that said, I have arrived and hopefully they take my stuff. So, just some food for thought. I wonder what you're thinking when it comes to this whole decluttering, de-owning stuff. Yeah. <laughs>